Hey everyone, in this super quick video, I wanted to make sure everyone was aware that the run command capability has been added for Azure Arc. So my Arc enabled server operating systems, I can now use the run command. Now, if we jump over to the portal, just a few things we need to be able to use this. So my agent has to be a minimum of 1.33. So if I'm looking at the portal over here, I can see the agent version. So I am good to go. Remember the agent version, it can update through, for example, Windows Update. If it's Windows, there's other mechanisms to go and update that agent. And then we'll see if we go and look down here, we've got this run command. Now today, I can't actually trigger it through the portal. It's giving me the instructions and links to the documentation, which is over here, which you can see this is a whole bunch of REST calls, but I can use the Azure CLI, I can use PowerShell, so I don't have to actually go and use that. So if we jump over for a second, um, so again, if I had to check the agent version, I could run this AZC, M agent, the Azure connected machine agent version on the actual box. So if I was over here and this was the box, you can see I have run that command right there. And so that's an easy way to check on the box. I can also very easily just check through Azure. So here I've installed the connected machine module and then I can just do a get AZ connected machine. And one of the things I can actually go and grab is the agent version. So I could go and check all of my instances. And then we can see down here, I've got two, I've got a 2012 and a 2022, and I've got the agent version. So I am good to go there. And again, I could use the AZ CLI. I can use the PowerShell module, which I have installed on this box. And you can go and look at the help. Now, it seems like the AZ CLI is a bit richer in functionality today. Um, this, the PowerShell doesn't have all of the same options. The documentation, you can just go and look at the regular, how you would run scripts in a VM. And I've got the link in the description. And this goes through though, all of the different options. So you'll see, see things where I can pass a shared access signature to a script to run, it doesn't have to be in line. There's things about secure parameters I may want to pass. Well, it talks about how you would do that in here. So we see we've got these protected parameters, uh, capabilities, things I don't want plain text. So this documentation again is really good and it does apply. If we were to go and look at the help, you'll see you have just huge amounts of options you can see, hey, look, I can run as a certain user over here. There's the ability to have um, scripts pass a SAS object. So all of those same things apply. But super, super simple, all I'm gonna do is just I'm gonna write out the computer name and the username. So super simple inline script. And I can just run that. Now, I'm not running it asynchronously. So we can see here it's gonna sit and it's going to take a little while to actually execute if it was asynchronously because that is an option along with the option to pass a different username again i wouldn't pass the password like this i would use those pre protected parameters as the best way to do that but if i did run it asynchronously then there's the get command and that helps me get the status of a new connected machine run command instance I have run. And again, I'm showing this in PowerShell, but you could just as easily use the AZ CLI, or I could use the REST methods directly, which is all outlined um, in the actual documentation. So while that's finishing, so again, agent minimum 1.33, it runs as elevated admin context by default. So for example, on Windows, it's running as local system, on Linux, it's gonna run as root. But if I use that run as, capability, I can make it run as a different context. So I don't have to do that. The Microsoft documentation also goes through the permissions you require. And actually, I think I need to go back to running this document, get there eventually. So limiting access to the run command, you can see the permissions to show in the details of a command and then actually running a command it is a specific permission. So if I wanted to restrict who can do this, 
Um, that's absolutely possible. So if I jump back over here, still running. Again, the way the connected machine agent works, it establishes that channel outbound and then it's uh, going and checking, is there something for me? So it's gonna take a little while. You can see it's still, it's doing that progress bar. And obviously the cool thing is, if I run it asynchronously, I can spawn a bunch of these off if I needed to, and then come and back and actually check that status. So now we can see that did finish. And this output is showing me here, just to show, I would get the same if I went and did the get command. So if it was that asynchronous, in fact, I'll just run this. I can still run it on one that was run synchronously. It's showing me, well, what was actually run? And again, it could have been a shared access signature to a script, so it would show me that URI there. But if I scroll up, so it succeeded, which is good. I see the job information. And I see what the output would have been. So sure enough for this machine, the host name and the username because it's local system will be the computer name dollar. And so we saw that work and it ran on that remote machine. Um, so that was it. Uh, so one way to show, it's really easy to use. And if I have got that arc enabled, again, this is free functionality. That's not part of any paid SKU. I'm just arc enabled the OS. And now I can run commands on it as well. Until next video, take care.